Uh, today uh, we're installing an in-drawer outlet in this, uh, in this drawer right here. Um, this is what they call the blade because it has one fixture on it. It's not the blade dual. And I'm going to install it in a drawer that's 13 and a half inches wide on the outside. The minimum is 13. And this thing is four and three quarters inches deep. So that qualifies for it to be a deep drawer. In order to install <laughs> or to cut the hole in the back of the box, for the fixture, I'm going to remove the drawer box from the cabinet take off that front handle and stand it up so I can get at it and cut a hole. Now there's more I should mention before we sit, switch to the um, this, uh, to cutting the hole. Uh, when I do install it I have to take into consideration uh, the cover plate here for the for the fixture. Come on Larry. That's my name by the way. Oh <laughs> I, got, I got it turned wrong way. We got to uh, also uh, take into consideration the cover plate, which goes on here when I when I make my calculations for where where to drill the hole. And uh, with this uh, indoor rock, docking unit in the box, when you buy an indoor indoor docking unit, you're going to get some nice instructions here, uh, telling you how to install the unit. Uh, there's uh, it's pretty helpful. And here's the thing I really like: this is a template that comes in the box and it tells you it's for a blade. Uh, in this case I have the blade but if you look at the other side of the same instruction sheet we have the instructions for the blade and the blade duo. So in my case I'll be taking this off of here and using the template for the blade and cut a hole in the back of the box. I'm going to install the uh, outlet into the drawer and then put the drawer back in and then figure out how to hook it up to the back wall here. I have the advantage. There is no countertop uh, in this case so it'll be a little easy for me. But uh, it can also be done if there's a countertop on it and you can uh, pull the drawer out and get down on your hands and knees or lay on the floor or whatever and reach in and still attach that back unit to the wall. Let's get to work with uh, cutting the hole in the back of the drawer box for this in-drawer outlet. The first thing I, I want to do before cutting the hole in the back of the drawer box is to use the cutting template that's provided by the manufacturer. And in this case, uh, since I'm using uh, the blade, uh, when you cut it out, you, you have the blade do all on one side of the template and you have the blade on the other side of the template. In my case, I'm using the blade. So I'll use this part of the template. And I want my fixture as far this way as possible. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm pushing that way as far as possible is because of the arm and the orient orientation that I'm using. So I want most of my space over there. So I want to mark this. Here's a pencil. I'm going to mark uh, where I want my hole to start, right there on this. And now I'll put in my template on the back here. So here's my marking template for the blade, the uh, blade, the single fixture. I'm going to fold it on the lines here and uh, I'll tape it right on. What you're watching me do now is to tape on the template for drilling the hole. And then I'm marking the four corners and I'm going to outline the hole that I need to uh, cut with my jigsaw. That's what's happening right there. There's my cutout. My cutout for the indoor outlet is uh, six inches wide uh, by two and a quarter this way. I'm going to go grab my jigsaw and, uh, and cut the hole in the back of this box. You can use whatever tool you like to make that hole. I'll be back in a minute. Well there you can see I've already cut the hole with my jigsaw. It is exactly six inches wide and two and a quarter inches high. So it'll accommodate this um, uh, elect, uh, electric box here uh, with ease. And uh, now my, uh, my, I like to install these when the drawer box is not in the cabinet. 
But you can do it with a drawer box in the cabinet. Not me though. Um, I'm going to do it right now before I put the drawer box back into the cabinet. So uh, we just slide it in because you have to get behind this cord. So we slide it in and rotate forward and then locate it exactly where you want it. And then uh, we have to uh, go to the inside now and uh, put screws in to secure it in place. So I'm going to spin the box around so you can see how I'm doing that. With the uh, fixture installed, I'm going to put it in right now. It's time for the screws. <clears throat> now we're uh, we're going to attach the cover plate. This right here is an interlocking thermostat, or what you what you would call a reset button. So if it uh, if if it hap if the power happens to blow, maybe because of a hair dryer or something, you just have to do this uh, reset button. All right. So the cover plate. Um, we'll put that on right now. There. The uh, in drawer outlet is installed. All right, so we have installed our cabinet. I mean, we've installed our drawer in our cabinet, and now we can attach the um, cable management arm to the back of the cabinet. That's the process we're up to right now. And this ain't going to be no piece of cake or bowl of ice cream or beef jerky or anything because looky here. I used up every bit of my tolerance. This is exactly two inches. And so what that means to me is that the location of the screws here on this uh, mounting plate have to be pretty close. Otherwise, when I try to, if this is out of alignment, for example, and I try to close, it's going to bind. So I got to get it pretty close. And that's that's what I'm up against right now in order to get this closed. Now working from the top, this may not be such a so hard to do, but not everybody gets to work from the top. And so I'm going to do it from the bottom myself. And let's take a look at how I'm going to accomplish that. So this is how I'm going to calculate uh, where to put the screws in this uh, mounting bracket right here. This is the piece that mounts to the back of the cabinet. And I want to know exactly where these holes line up in the cabinet so I can put the screw in them. Now here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to measure from the side of my drawer box like this uh, with my tri-square to the center of those two holes. And uh, it is precisely four inches to the center of those holes. And then I have to add one half of an inch here because of these drawer slides. So my distance from the inside wall of my cabinet to the center of this line of holes here, right there is going to be four and one half inches. So inside of the cabinet, I'll mark that all the way up and down on the back of the cabinet, four and a half inches. Now the other measurement that I'm interested in, let me show you that one. The next, uh, <clears throat> the next measurement that I want is from the bottom of my drawer box here to the center of this bottom hole. What's the distance there? So I take my little ruler here and I'll figure that out to the center of that hole. I gotta kinda be where it's gotta be. And that's gonna be one inch. It's gotta be one inch to the center of the hole. Uh, from the inside wall of the cabinet to the center of this hole, four and a half inches, and from the bottom of the drawer box to the center of this hole, one inch. Those are the marks I will make inside of the drawer box. Here we are under the cabinet, staring at the 
back wall of the cabinet. And what we need to do in here is determine exactly where to locate the holes in that mounting bracket right there. And I don't know. We got to, So I'm going to draw a line on the back of the cabinet. Uh, where is the bottom of the drawer box? And where is four and a half inches from the left side? So here you are looking at the vertical line inside of the back of the cabinet, four and a half inches from the left. And the horizontal line represents the bottom of the drawer box. Now watch as the drawer goes shut. And you'll notice that uh, the more the drawer goes shut, the tighter, uh, the closer those screw holes are going to line up on the um, the mounting bracket at the back of the cabinet. Can you see that? You'll see right there. You see how that screw hole is lined up perfectly. Let's zoom in a little more. Let's get even tighter on that. So there's the four and a half inches, and then it's the crosshair is the bottom of the drawer box. Now, if we go up, I can go up. I can go up a whole inch and then attach the screw and that would be precisely where it needs to be. So when I pull the drawer open and I'm reaching in here, I should be able to get that screw in. Let's see if I can do it. Well, you're up there looking in. I'm down here doing all the hard work. And what I'm gonna do is put some double-sided tape on the back of this bracket. This is really super good double-sided tape, and it's thin. And then, I'm going to put this right up where I want it, exactly where I want it. So those pilot holes are right lined up at four and a half inches. And we'll put a little pressure on that double-sided tape. <laughs> there. I like that. And we'll just leave it that way. Should be good enough. I, I, I'm thinking it's pretty strong as is with that up there. Look at that. <laughs> it amazes me. So, not too worried. Um, I'm going to now. Uh, I did. So what it requires, and you maybe already saw this, I did pile up the holes, but when you're making videos, you've got to do stuff over and over again. And so the holes are piloted, and now I can put the screws in, if I haven't lost those already. Because what I'm trying to show here is that you can do this from inside the cabinet. Like I mentioned, maybe I mentioned, I can't remember. This is only 15 inches wide, so it's about all I can do to get in here. Love that. I, when I started this operation, it never occurred to me that double-sided tape was going to be part of it. There. Now whether you like it or not, that bracket is in there. Self-close, soft-close. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Well, that's what it looks like from the top. It looks like the same. It's the same thing. Oh, come on, self-close. There, it's in. In the end, um, this dro docking drawer or in-drawer outlet turned out to be a, a really nice installation. But there's a couple of things that I think are, are worth mentioning. And, uh, and one of them is this double-sided tape that I used. It's from 3M. Uh, I found it very useful. Here, let me just sh show you. Uh, with this, on the back of the drawer box, uh, when you install your outlet, there's this bracket right here. And I used that to attach it to the back of the cabinet. 
uh, so that it would stay there when I put the screws in. That, I really did like using the double-sided tape there. So that's, that's one point. Now the second point, I think, is the most important thing. This is what I consider to be probably the, uh, the most important thing I learned while installing this uh, uh, in-drawer outlet. And that is the location for this rear bracket. I took the time to calculate exactly where to draw this vertical line inside of my cabinet. I measured uh, with this arm fully closed, like this. When that was fully closed, I measured over to the to the screw holes to calculate how far from the edge of the cabinet to the center of that line of holes. Now I could have done it from the left or the right. All I needed to know, where am I going to draw this vertical line inside of my cabinet? Then I drew it. And there it is, this vertical line. After that, when I crawled into the cabinet to install it, I just had to find the vertical line and adjust my rear mounting bracket, slide it up to where I wanted it, and because I was using the double-sided tape, I pressed it against the back of the cabinet and then put the screws in. That's what I learned. So there's my advice uh, to install an in-drawer outlet. Don't, um, uh, don't uh, discount the advantage of going through the effort to figure out where to draw that vertical line. You will not be sorry. The other line you see here, this horizontal line, that re represents the bottom of the drawer box. And I knew that my screw could come up a whole inch without, without coming up too far. And I, I didn't push it that far. Uh, the uh, the uh, arm is not going to bind. And so I, I used that horizontal line representing the bottom of the box to calculate it where I wanted the bracket to be, how high up to push it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can do the thumbs up. Um, Subscribe and share it with your friends.